Hello and welcome to another episode of Monkey Builds, the irregular series on the Jenny Kirk channel, where I take a look at some model kits and we try to build them and give you my opinion. First up today, in fact the only thing up today, is this little piece from Dundas Models. It's a Festiniog third class carriage. And it comes in a little kit. It's not in a box, it's just in a packet. So they're really keeping it uh, down to the old style, which I really like. So it's a 009 four millimeter scale model railway kit, which Warbler Productions helped me pick out at the Great Electric Train Show last year. So finally got time to build it. And let's take a look at how I got on. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Now this is a pretty standard, straightforward, old style model kit. It comes in a plastic bag with a few sheets of pieces which are easy to assemble and the instructions are really straightforward. I painted the entire thing while it was still in the sprues, left it to dry and it worked out really well. It was very easy to paint, quite enjoyable and once that was all dry the instructions were so quick and simple to assemble that it was fantastic and it just came together in a way that I actually was quite stunned because normally when I come into an old style kit I expect it to not be quite as straightforward as the modern ones where they've had a lot of more time to research and develop but this one straight together looked great at the end and I was really pleased with it. I also put in just because I had the time and space I put in five seated people from the Pico model scene range which is just this little packet and uh, it's just five people so the entire cabin is full and it looks like a nice carriage full of people and I'm actually really impressed with it. This thing came together so quick, so easy. Anyone could do this, even a beginner model. In fact, it would be a perfect kit for a beginning modeler who wants to build stuff with the model railways. And I was overall really, really pleased with it. It's not an expensive kit, doesn't take a huge amount of time. You could do this in a couple of evenings and it'll be very enjoyable. But that's not all we're going to do with it because after I'd painted and assembled this and then went over it and made sure that all of the assembly was really nice. Oh, and the best part is it's free running. This will work on a model railway. It's perfect for putting on your model railway. But like I say, after I'd uh, painted it up again to make sure that all of the bits that, you know, tend to come off when you're painting on a sprue and then you assemble it. Once all of that was done, I handed it over to Jenny because Jenny is now going to take over and weather this. Let's see what she's got for us. Hi there everyone. Well, change of voice and Zoe has asked me to weather her creation. So I'm really pleased with how she's got this to turn out. It really does look amazing and I'm really impressed with all her hard work that's gone into making this model. But to make it look perfect, we're going to try a bit of weathering and given that this is a largely wooden construction on the original full-size coach I've stuck with just using something like dark earth weathering powders here from Humbrol and I'm going to give it a really quick going over. The idea with this is I want to pick out the detail without making it look filthy. It's got to look like something that is used but is cared for. So that's the plan and essentially it's just simply a case of very carefully and very lightly just getting the brush into the dark earth and then scrubbing that over the top and you can see it just starts to pick out some of the, uh, of the actual wooden planking detail. We're going to be heavier on the bottom and lighter on the top and then what I might do is very carefully clean off the windows because the glass itself would be reasonably well cared for and also Zoe has put in some really really nice seated figures so it makes sense to be able to actually see them 
So you can already see some of that detail, the planking detail is starting to uh, come out again to the fore. Again, probably a little bit more dirt between carriages. And we're going to try and get more down near the bottom and feather that out near the top. One potential problem that uh, is arising is you can see where there's a little bit of glue got on the side. The weathering powder doesn't seem to quite stick as well. So we may need to step up our game a little bit using something like a colour wash. Now I'm going to use a little bit of this black wash as well. Now part of this is going to be about uh, just cleaning and muting some of the powder down and we don't want too much we certainly don't want any of the the gunky stuff from the bottom i'm just going to probably a little bit much there keep it away from the windows a little bit that one dip of the brush should be enough for the full coach that's looking a little bit much, so I'm going to use a little bit of tissue in a moment to wipe that down. And this will mix with that powder as well. This gives us a little bit more of an even coat, just mixing in with that brown. It's fine. Again, strokes from top running down to the bottom. And what I want to do as well is just introduce a little bit of cleaner brush cleaning fluid. Again, I just want to clean some of this down. So I'm just going to uh, use a little bit of, uh, of tissue. What I want to do is just kind of remove some of that excess again. You see the black start to pick out some of the detail and we've got that faded wood effect starting to come through. You can see there a little bit faded in places. Again, just ease some of that black down towards the bottom and then just cleaning up and you'll find that It'll just keep within some of the planking detail. I'm going to leave some of the dirt around the coupling. I'm just going to agitate some of that wash. And then what I want is to dab a lot of that away. The sides of the coach would tend to be a lot cleaner. And then I also want to just clean up those windows as well. Don't want deposits on them, so just use a little bit of that cleaning fluid just to clean them off. Dab it clean. Just need to do this end again, agitate that wash. Then we're going to just pull some of that down, leave some of the muck around the coupling. Not too much, that might be a little bit much. Always downward strokes. And then we're going to move on to the roof. Again, there's enough just muck and dirt on this brush to give it a good coat, not too thick. And then just clean it off a little bit. We're going to leave some just down the center. And it's got much more of that used look to it, which is exactly what we want. And then I'm just going to dry out the brush, get as much of that out as I can. And then back to the powders. And just a tiny suggestion. Again, just more than anything. Knitting it down, changing how that black is sitting on it, and then 
a little bit just along the bottom we're getting that effect of the paint just starting to peel a little bit turn it around the other side again we've got that paint peeling effect coming through quite well a little bit of this dark earth a little bit more on the ends Again, keep it more towards the bottom and there we're done so as you can see Jenny made a fantastic effort out of this and the entire thing has come together so well that I actually cannot recommend this highly enough Dundas models you've really done a great model here and I'm looking forward to see what else we can find from their range because this was actually a lot of fun to put together but now that it's all done and it's all weathered up it's going to take pride of place on Jen's Minnith Tatis Railway. So you never know, in the future you might see it around at uh, events. But for now, that's all I've got time for. So thank you so much. I would get, now we do have one more thing, don't we? Because I almost forgot to give it a rating. I will give this five out of five. It's that good, enjoyed it that much. But like I say, all I've got for you today is that. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this. And if you have, remember to click that like button, share it with your friends so that they'll know a good model when they see one. And do subscribe for future videos, because Jenny will be back with more on Monday. But until then, I've been Zoe Kirk-Robinson, the cupboard monkey from the Monday Club, and Jenny will see you later. Bye-bye. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papert, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, and Jennifer Garrett. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.